This is what technology is all about. This is an application which I would love to have in India. We unfortunately spend several thousand crores on the National Malaria Eradication Program, Tuberculosis Control Program, and various infectious diseases. We assume that every cough is tuberculosis and prescribe anti-tuberculous treatment. This has resulted in 80% of acid fast bacillus becoming resistant to the primary uh, level of primary drugs which we use in tuberculosis. It is absolutely essential that we document the presence of the tuberculous bacillus in a micro under a microscope and again, whenever a technician is posted in a town or a small place, he goes on leave immediately. It does not require too much of intelligence to take a smear. A school dropout can do it. But what is difficult is to get a trained person to interpret it. And with a mobile phone, it is so easy, particularly with bandwidth available, particularly with 3G becoming a reality by the end of the year, to send hundreds of these different field of views onto a bigger center where the person can do this. And believe me, the prototype costs 20 US dollars, 1,000 rupees. And if we mass produce this, it will probably come to about 500 rupees. Again, it's impossible for any doctor to be able to diagnose myocardial infarction, HIV, brain tumor, uh, a, a rare drug-induced uh, dermatological complication, etc. It's so simple with your mobile phone. Today, most of the big books, Gray's Anatomy, is available on a mobile phone. Textbook of pathology, textbook of physiology, anatomy, medicine, surgery, you name it. Everything is available on a mobile phone. You just type in the symptoms, it gives you a differential diagnosis, and it helps you to do what it is. I would, love, I, I would do anything now to be 15 years old again and start studying all over again. What a beautiful way of studying. On my mobile phone, anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, pathology, the whole works. And when I have a real live patient in front of me, I just with my, I turn the phone the opposite side, take a photograph of the patient, and believe me, you have a reference laboratory somewhere in cyberspace. I can compare it, and the phone will automatically tell me the picture which you have on the screen resembles photograph number 342, with the diagnosis of which is so much, and that triggers me and lets me know what is happening. We are truly becoming mobile. Small is beautiful, whether you like it or not. And here you see an uh, EEG, you will be able to have uh, 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 an EEG giving the signals onto a mobile phone. Endoscopy, laptop EEGs are going to be replaced by mobile phone EEGs. Now this is all happening in the rest of the world. Why can't we do it in our own country? As recently as a few months ago, you can see the 72-year-old gentleman, a chronic smoker, COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. We need to evaluate his lung functions, and you can see how he's blowing into a, a, a meter, estimating his pulmonary function capacity, and through the mobile phone, transmitting this data to a central center, which immediately analyzes it and sends it back. Here you can see oxygen saturation, blood pressure, pulse rate, temperature, whatever you want, the peripheral medical device. Now it's very nice to see that India is not too far behind. A recent report from IIT Chennai mentioned how using the mobile phone they are keeping tab on diseases. We already know that PDAs or computers are being distributed in Orissa and people are using it. Back home in Hyderabad to be precise, the Apollo Hospitals has very recently started this. On September 15th, it's going to be rolled out pan-India, all over India. It started with, I'm very happy to note that the moderator of this particular uh, session, Dr. Ruchi, is here, and she has played a very important part on this. On the wellness clinic, we are going to have kiosks all over the place, and using this, you will be able to, Madam, with your permission, I've used your name here. You can see this. So you take your own test. And uh, you can find out where, how the status of your heart and so on. And then you'll be rewarded with oats at the end after you take this uh, test. So this is what is going to happen. And very soon you'll find that air cell will not only be advocating, uh, 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 whether it's air cell, air cell, reliance, it doesn't matter. The principle is the same. So tomorrow you'll be able to search, browse by category. You will be searching for cardiology, neurology, psychiatry, and so on. And on a mobile phone, you will be able to see this. Again, I belong to the BC era. Before computers and before Christ are one and the same. Now, I would like to revive the concept of home visits. 
I remember how when I just graduated, I used to make home, home visits. And it was fascinating both for the doctor and the patient. Unfortunately, today, all of us feel it's below our dignity to visit a patient's home. So why not we virtually visit him? Why not we electronically visit him? And that's what we have done in Madras. It's a very small number, about 25 cases. But sending one man to the moon is enough to prove that you can go to the moon. And I think 25 patients in Madras, I see no reason why we can't escalate it to 25 million. And this is how we do it. The BP apparatus ends in a USB port. The stethoscope ends in a USB port. All I need is a laptop, a wireless modem here. The, the newspaper is full of advertisements of that, a webcam, and we are able to convert a home, if you want, into a virtual house visit. For lack of time, I'm not showing you the video. This was a patient with a head injury who was discharged, and we are able to evaluate him from the comfort of his home. The Indian railways, I've always been fascinated by the railways. 7,000 passenger trains a day, 20 million passengers a day moving. And so I decided one day, so this is my house, this is the sitting from my house, I was able to do a reasonable pediatric examination of a child in a moving train. The train was moving at 80 kilometers per hour. It was 250 miles away from Chennai. And, and in the next two years, Railtel has already uh, uh, officially announced that in the next two years, 100 expresses and trains are going to be provided with internet facilities. So once that is available, we will be able to provide in real time health care to, if not 20 million passengers, at least 1 million passengers who use this train. Again, it was fascinating to see an advertisement by the government of Delhi asking for a inviting tenders for a medical call center. The first medical call center has just been started five kilometers away from where we are now at the Apollo Hospitals Hyderabad. They have already started receiving several hundred phone calls. Like the, the speaker in the morning was talking, about EM, was talking about emergencies. This is not necessarily emergencies. This may be for routine medical care. So this is what is going to happen. A health call, a telephone triage. And uh, we are also planning to use the NHS the NHS in the United Kingdom over the last 10 years, they have come up with some fantastic software validated by the experts in the United Kingdom. So to start with, we will take 40 main symptoms, hopefully have them translated into the local language. And because SMS at the moment depends on English, we are looking at the voice SMS also. Again, the phone, as I told you, 650 million people having mobile phones. Why not have an ICE icon in case of emergency? So once you have an in-case-of-emergency icon, you can know the name of the person, the emergency contact number, and who is to be contacted if he's allergic to any drugs, whether he's had a bypass surgery, and of course if he has an insurance, what is the insurance policy number, and so on. Today, everything is possible. All this has been indigenously developed by the in-house technical team at the Apollo Hospitals Hyderabad. A mobile handwritten prescription can automatically be tra uh, uh, translated beautifully into a regular Word document. You can see ECGs being transmitted. You can see vitals being transmitted. Insurance claims can be processed from mobile phone. Last year, the Chennai Corporation started sending SMS messages to uh, women who had just delivered as reminder service to, so that their babies will come for immunization. And recent studies have indicated that the compliance and adherence rate has increased 10 times. The Kerala government has done enormous work on SMS and again, doctor and call on your mobile phone. Uh, today, India, I'm sure Mr. Bedi will confirm this, from the era of e-governance, they're slowly moving into the era of m-governance. No less a body than the North American Radiological Society, the most respected society of radiologists in the world, have officially confirmed that the quality of images on a phone is sufficient for doctors to make accurate diagnosis of appendicitis. From a medical legal point of view, in a court of law, this will stand and today I can make a diagnosis. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what is going to happen, not in the future, but in your lifetime. Maybe two years from now when we have a conference like this, I would be able to provide you with data and tell you that you cough into a phone and you will be able to get a diagnosis. After all, it's only a question of acoustic vocalization analysis software. Depending on the timber, the pitch, the quality, etc., etc., the mobile phone will be able to tell you whether this is whooping cough, pneumonia, or even a bronchogenic carcinoma. So this is what is going to happen. 
to tell you that wireless medicine is not as 